I'm glad to introduce our paper, smoothing out binary linear codes and worst case sub-exponential hardness for LPN. This is joint work with Zhang Zhang that appears at Crypto 2021. At the core of this work is uh, worst case to average case reductions for LPN, which is in turn based on smoothing lemma for binary linear codes. This is the outline of this talk. We will start with the preliminaries. First of all, binary linear codes. Linear means that uh, we encode the message X by multiplying with the N by N matrix, called the generator matrix. Binary means it's over GF2, namely every entry of the matrix of vector is either 0 or 1. And M is the length of the code word. In general, a good code has some non-trivial amount of minimum distance, which is defined as the smallest Hamming distance between all possible pairs of code words. Some previous work consider a strong, strong version of Hamming distance requirement, called balanced code, where this Hamming distance has uh, both the upper bound and the lower bound. In other words, the code words has almost the same number of zeros and ones, up to a beta fraction. In this work, we also consider the so-called independent code, where the generator matrix has k-wise independent rows. We mentioned that the MDS code, maximum distance separatable code, is a special case of the independent code for k equals n. The search version of the decoding problem is that given the generator matrix and the noisy code word to find out the original x in presence of noise vector e. The average case version of the problem is called learning parity with noise, where the matrix and secret is sampled uniformly at random, and the noise follows from the coordinate-wise independent distribution, namely the Bernoulli distribution. The worst case of the problem is called the nearest code word problem, NCP in short. And we consider the promised version of NCP, where the noise vector is guaranteed to have an exact amount of Hamming weight. We're particularly interested in the worst case to average case reduction for these two versions of the problems. We mentioned that some known attacks on the two forms of the decoding problems. For the standard LPN, where the noise rate is constant, which means uh, independent of the dimension, the best known attacks are BKW, that has a slightly sub-exponential time complexity. The promised NCP is known to be NP-hard in the high noise region. When the noise rate is subconstant, the best known attacks for NCP at the LPN has the complexity of uh, roughly 2 to the power of the product of the noise rate and the dimension n. In other words, in the known noise region, we do, we do not know any algorithm that solves uh, the LPN better than NCP. Let's uh, take a look at the reduction for, from NCP to LPN. Suppose we have an NCP instance, and for our convenience, uh, suppose it's in the transposed form, where this S transpose and X transpose uh, denote uh, a row vector. We know from previous work that uh, how to transform the NCP instance into a single LPN sample. That is, we sample a random R from the sparse di distribution that has length M and roughly Hamming weight D. And we also sample a uniformly random row vector Y. Then we multiply the no noisy code word with the sparse vector R such that uh, hopefully CR will be uniformly random and XR will be the bio biased noisy bit as in the LPN. And finally, the original message of the NCP S has no entropy at all, so it's, it needs to be XOR'd with the random mask Y. We can do this many times to get a, as many LPN samples as needed. At Eurocrypt 2019, at Eurocrypt 2019, Branksky et al. gives a smoothing lemma 
show to show that uh, this kind of approach actually works as long as the underlying binary linear code is a balanced code and R is sampled from a special sparse distribution. They prove this uh, through the so-called binary Fourier transform. And here we offer, in this paper, we offer an uh, alternative proof via, via the, uh, using the Vezirani's XOR lemma. I would like to elaborate a bit more about the sparse, sparse distribution that R is sampled from. So this is the distribution that has uh, length m and of weight, roughly d. As shown, shown previously during the reduction, xr will become the noise of the LPN, where r is the m-bit error vector that has a fixed humming weight. And this results into a biased bit that has roughly 2 to the wd over m close to uniform. There are a few candidates about this uh, sparse distribution. Quite naturally, we can sample it uh, from all strings of length m and Hamming weight d. Or alternatively, we can take d random strings. Each of them has Hamming weight exactly one, and we then take uh, their XOR sum. Another option is that we can sample it from an m-fold Bernoulli distribution of rate d over m such that uh, the expected Hamming weight of R is D. Now we can take a closer look at the BLVW quantitatively. First, we look at their smoothing lemma for balanced code. There is some lower bound on the NCP noise rate due to the known attacks. There is also the gilbert vashimov type bound on beta to guarantee that the, balan the balanced code actually exists. Finally, the problem can be seen as uh, extracting n random bits from source R in presence of noise. So there is a lower bound on the sparsity of the random distribution. The end result of BLVW is that uh, assume the quasi polynomial worst case hardness for NCP on extremely low noise balanced code, we get the quasi polynomial hardness for LPN in the high noise region, where this noise is inverse poly polynomially close to uniform. So this is more or less a feasibility result. There remains space for further improvement. As we can see, the range of lambda is quite limited. It needs to be at least super constant. Otherwise, there will be polynomial attacks for NCP. And lambda is upper bounded by O log n at the same time, because any larger lambda would make the LPN noise negligibly close to uniform and making the result less meaningful. Now we introduce our work on how to get. get now we introduce. Now we introduce our work on how to get tighter reductions for smoothing lemma and better results for LPN. We would start with a probabilistic analysis and give a non-constructive form of the smoothing lemma. That is, there exists at least a certain fraction of the code that for any error vector of weight W and sparse di distribution R CR is statistically close to uniform, even given the noise XR. The proof follows three steps. First, given a uniformly random C, we have that uh, the inequality holds by the leftover hash lemma. Then, by a Markov inequality, for every error vector X, there, ex there exists a certain bounded fraction of, th of the code that fails the randomness extraction. Finally, take, take into account that uh, there are m choose k different possibilities for, for the error vector x. We sum, over, uh, we sum up all the fraction of the bad code by a uni bond, union bond. So the end goal is to prove that the hardness for the standard LPN whose noise rate is constant. And we, rec we recall the entropy requirement. 
then the bad fraction of the code will be exceeding 1, which is useless. Put it differently, it is, seems not possible to get a worst case to average case reduction for standard LPN unless more tighter techniques are employed. We may in particular avoid the union bond or any other inequality that uh, incurs a huge security loss. So here we have an important observation about the smoothing lemma, which is key to obtain tighter result. It is easy to prove the unconditional case that CR is statistically close to uniform, but proving the conditional case that CR is close to uniform given leakage XR is much less efficient, since one has to take into account all possible values for the error vectors, which, le which leads to much worse bound. What we prove is the following. If R is drawn from a coordinate-wise sparse distribution, namely the Bernoulli distribution, then the statistical distance in the conditional case can be bounded by that of the unconditional case, paying reasonable cost. And this bond is almost tight with respect to the sparse, sparse distribution R is sampled from. Therefore, uh, this uh, reduces the problem to bond the statistical distance between CR and uniform distribution for a very specific uh, code in consideration, such as the balanced code and the independent code we considered in this paper. Uh, we will omit the proofs, which is, trivial, uh, which is not trivial but uh, not so surprising. Now we state our main result that Assume that the NCP problem is hard in the worst case, then it implies the LPN problem is hard for certain parameter choices. First, we get the similar result as BLVW by setting the parameters to appropriate values. In this case, our result look, looks uh, asymptotically the same as BLVW. If we want to compare more quantitatively, then, as tabulated, uh, for most value of m, our result in the right hand is uh, slightly worse. But when m increase to polynomials of higher orders, then our result, uh, in terms of the LPN's noise rate, becomes much better and it keeps improving. In contrast, the result of BLVW ceases to improve for m equals to n cubic and beyond. This is because in their smoothing lemma, the bond consists of two terms. So the second term, when it is uh, sufficiently small, the first term will become dominant. Namely, we, we don't get a better bond no matter how large the value of m is. An advantage of our result is that uh, we can tra actually trade the larger M for better noise rate. More importantly, we obtain our result that was not known before. For instance, by setting the noise rate of NCP to N2 minus C, and assume that uh, it has uh, almost optimum hardness, namely, it nearly matches the known attacks up to a constant in the exponent then we get uh, the desired uh, result that uh, you know, sub-exponential hardness for standard LPN. The proof is quite straightforward by setting the values for the parameters accordingly. Note that uh, the, success, uh, the success probability here consists of two terms, which is why we need to consider two cases for the different range of the values of C. We try to find some applications for our result beyond what is proven, which, which is not very successful, but uh, it's, uh, it's uh, worth mentioning. For example, we wonder if uh, collision-resistant hash functions and the public key encryptions can be constructed from the worst-case hardness of the decoding problem. As said, 
we prove the uh, sub-exponential hardness of our standard LPN. And we also know from previous work that uh, the standard LPN with sufficient sub-exponential hardness implies public key encryption and the collision-resistant hash functions. Unfortunately, the hardness of the LPN we prove is not as strong as what is needed for PKE and CIH up to a lowercase uh, omega factor as we can see as I highlighted on the on the slide. Another wishful thinking is whether we can have a exponential algorithm to solve NCP with constant error rate which will be a counterpart to the BKW in solving standard LPN. We know by Liu Vajshevsky's BKW variant that uh, the LPN can be solved with polynomial many samples, with noise moderate, moderately close to uniform. And another corollary of our result is that uh, there, if there exist algorithms that solving LPN whose noise is inversely polynomial close to uniform, then it implies another algorithm that solves uh, NCP with constant error rate. Unfortunately, these two results cannot be connected, again due to another small gap. In the above, the delta lies in between the open interval of 0 and 1. Well, in our corollary, the delta has to be 1. Next, we will present another cute result about uh, reducing LWE to large field LPN. In general, there are two ways to generalize LPN to a large modulus P. If we use the generalized Bernoulli distribution for the noise, namely, E is either zero or uniformly distributed over GFP, then it becomes the so-called large field LPN. Alternatively, if we use the discrete, uh, alternatively, if you, we use discrete uh, Gaussian for the noise, then the problem is called LWE. We show that uh, LWE implies LPN over the same prime modulus in the high noise region. The proof is very simple. That is, we can transfer every LWE sample into a LPN sample using a random mask M and multiplying M with the LPN sample. As we can see, MA is the product of a scalar and a vector multiplication, which always, uh, which is always uniformly random. And for any non-zero E, ME is uniformly distributed over FP, excluding zero. And otherwise, ME is zero. This means that uh, ME follows the generalized uh, Bernoulli distribution over GFP. And therefore, the right-hand sample after the transform is exactly the uh, LPN sample over GFP, uh, QED. Finally, a short summary of this work. We present two worst case to average case reductions for different types of LPN. First, large field LPN can be reducible from LWE of the same modulus and thus uh, reducible from worst case lattice problems such as gap SVP. Second, we generalize the reductions of BLVW from promised NCP to LPN. The underlying NCP problem we consider includes not only the balance code, but also independent code. In addition to what is approved in BLVW, we also show that uh, under the nearly optimum hardness assumption about low noise app NCP, it implies the de desired end result, namely sub-exponential hardness for standard LPN. There remain a few open questions such as how we can base the hardness of the LPN on promised NCP of any code with a non-trivial amount of mean Hamming distance, minimum Hamming distance. How to construct uh, public key encryption and collision resistant hash functions from the worst case uh, decoding problems and uh, find out more efficient and useful relations between LWE and LPN. That uh, concludes my talk. Thank you for your attention.